Hi guys, uh, today I wanted to review this uh, particular book, it's called Fishes of the Orinoco in the Wild and it's a uh, book by Ivan uh, Mikolji. Uh, Ivan Mikolji is a very well known Venezuelan uh, explorer and photographer uh, you uh, probably uh, must have stumbled upon his videos on YouTube. Uh, if you searched for habitats, wild habitats in South America, uh, he's made lots of um, really spectacular underwater footage on uh, cardinal tetras and lots of dwarf cichlids and lots of other fish in their natural habitats in Venezuela and Colombia so you might have seen his videos on YouTube. This book uh, probably was the most widely anticipated uh, publication in fish keeping world um, this year and certainly here in the UK. It was published in November this year 2020 so it's a very new book and I've only received it about uh, two weeks ago. It is, is not a cheap book. Uh, I paid a uh, hundred US dollars for it including delivery but I think it might be more expensive later on because now they have some sort of a Christmas discount. So let's have a look at it. So by, by the title you could have guessed that it, it is about uh, fishes of Orinoco River which is in South America and it's about wild fish. So the book starts with an uh, introduction to habitats. Uh, there are some really spectacular forests in here. These are cardinal tetras in the wild and leaf fish. Yeah it starts with an uh, introduction to various habitats from where this photos were made and uh, Ivan Mikolji is certainly very famous for making this absolutely fascinating photos of wild habitats and of fish in, in their natural habitats. Uh, the book consists of um, pictures and some brief information on I think about 150 species of Orinoco fish so basically you get the name, uh, Latin name, uh, popular name some brief description of um, the habitat, how this particular species lives in that habitat, some details on how they behave and so on. Uh, then you get some taxonomy, uh, more taxonomy, you get uh, distribution, uh, size apparently in the wild, pH range which is very interesting and temperature. You also get a list of other fish that uh, live in the same habitat, that share the same habitat with that particular species and plants. In those cases when uh, there are no plants in the same habitat you, you get some description of the hardscape that you're likely to encounter in the same habitat. So the pictures are, so are certainly absolutely beautiful. Uh, information is also very useful. I would say that this book is uh, a treasure to anyone working with biotopes, anyone creating uh, natural aquariums or biotope style aquariums because it provides you with a detailed information on what type of biotope you need to recreate and what type of conditions you need to create for this particular species. So that book is certainly something that uh, any biotope artist or any biotope aquarist would like to have. It provides absolutely excellent information on biotopes. It also has a lot of, well certainly many of the species uh, are quite rare in the hobby so you, you won't probably find them in your local fish stores. Uh, so these are species that many of them I've never heard about so like yeah these are the species that are not available in the hobby but there are also quite a lot of species uh, widely available in the hobby that's for example royal panak and it's quite widespread in the hobby and um, yeah there's certainly interesting information on some of the species that we've had in the hobby a beautiful school of uh, Corridoras, I think it's uh, bronze quarries and yeah definitely bronze quarries uh, we usually have them captive bred and uh, uh, they are absolutely they look different uh, they're not as co colorful as uh, on his pictures and I would never recognize it as a bronze quarry because normally bronze quarry has just some kind of yellowish greenish fish but it doesn't have this black spot in the middle like the wild specimens so this is interesting to see. It also has information on some uh, 
I'm sorry, I'm looking for uh, the Ram Cichlid. Oh, that's Oscar in the wild. Quite popular in the hobby as well. Uh, there's a very interesting entry on Ram Cichlid. I'll just have to find, yeah, here, here we go. Uh, this is what we know as a German Ram uh, Cichlid. Um, it's called Ram Cichlid because clearly it's not from Germany, it's from Venezuela. And these are pictures of this fish in the wild in their natural habitats. They don't look as colorful as uh, domestic strains, captive bred strains, but you can still see that they're quite beautiful. Uh, the interesting fact that is written here that they inhabited, they inhabit a wide range of habitats. They live in a different um, habitats, different uh, water parameters, and uh, they're quite adaptive. Uh, uh, in the hobby, we're quite used to that German rams need higher temperatures, like 30 degrees Celsius, and you need to keep them at this temperature constant. But you can see here that they can also live at lower temperatures in the wild, for example, 25 degrees. And in terms of pH, uh, they can take a relatively higher pH, like 6.5, that's certainly closer to neutral. Uh, there's also a very interesting entry on guppies because in the hobby we're quite used that guppies are hard water life bearers, so you need to keep it in hard water. But according to the information here, they can also live in very soft water, pH 5.5, and at very high temperatures. This is something that we would not be recommended to keep uh, domestic guppies at. So you generally have to keep the messing guppies at lower temperatures. Um, it would be actually very compatible with discus fish because they live in similar pH ranges and temperature ranges. Although, of course, in the wild they don't live in the same habitats with discus fish. Yeah, so there's quite, quite a bit of interesting information for hobbies. But if you expect this book to be... Uh, a book about fish keeping, a book that explains you how to keep the species in your aquarium, you would probably be disappointed because it is not. It provides you with information about uh, water parameters, about habitats, uh, and all sorts of uh, other useful information that you can recreate in your fish tank, that you can use in your fish tank, but it doesn't really explain you how to keep this fish in, in your fish tank and clearly you have to keep in mind that all this um, temperature ranges ph ranges they are applicable to this fish to wild fish and not to the domestic uh, strains or captive bred fish again if we talk about uh, the ram cichlid i'll just need to find it clearly almost all of the fish that we have in our fish stores, uh, they're captive bred, they're bred on Asian farms, and they're used to very different uh, water parameters, very different temperature and pH than the wild fish. And if you follow these guidelines in this book, you need to consider that they are only applicable to the wild fish and not to the fish that you might have in your fish tank, because most likely that's a, a domestic uh, strain, that's a captive bred fish. So yeah, uh, my conclusion would be that this is an excellent book for, oh yeah, these are Ramino stators in the wild, they look absolutely amazing, and you can see they don't really keep a tight school in the wild, they kind of all spread out here, we normally expect them to be schooling, and we normally expect them to kind of swim in this tight formation, but that's clearly not the case in the wild, they all spread out, and uh, they live clearly in really uh, strong currents. You can see that all the plants are kind of under the flow, uh, heavy flow. All right, so uh, this is certainly a great book for anyone interested in biotope uh, aquariums, biotope fish tanks, and uh, uh, you can learn a lot in terms of keeping these fishes in captivity. If you work with wild fish or if you want to recreate in your aquarium conditions similar to natural habitats. Uh, but yeah, that's certainly a specialist book. It's not uh, something that beginner 
fish keeper would like to have unless you're interested in pictures and pictures that are absolutely amazing pictures are top notch and uh, they're really beautiful so overall this is a really beautiful book to have on your coffee table to have in your book collection and uh, it's very useful for anyone interested in biotopes or anyone interested in recreating uh, natural conditions in your fish stock so i hope um, you found this video useful uh, leave your comments in the comment section don't forget to subscribe if you hadn't and i'll see you in um, further videos